to like have a vague sort of little introduction type chat. Yeah, we had uh, what you lot listening to. <laughs> we did. Okay. Yeah. What do we need now? Something better than Something that. Something better than Ideally. that. That was the best thing I ever come up with. So uh, we could sing everything versus everything. Let's not sing. Let's, let's not sing everything versus everything. There's always where it starts. I could just I could just use this bit like as the little bit before the music comes in, and then when the music stops. In fact, that's quite meta. Like, it just. <laughs> We just start as if we've already started. But we do need a starting point. Of the thing. Yeah, but we can just go a little more into it first. Okay. okay, let's do that then. Okay. Everything versus everything. Hello. Uh, this is Hello. The podcast where we try and put everything in the world in order from best to worst. I'm joined today by Ewan, who was on the last episode. Hello. Before that. That's right. And two people who were not. Who are called. I'm Val. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mark. Yes. And Yay, for, for people. <laughs> Yay, people. New people. See, we we're not just three people who know each other. We know other people as well. <laughs> um, you did promise in the first episode that you did know some girls. True, yes. We've got yeah, one. We have. Hey. Um, <laughs> trapped. Uh, okay, you, you guys, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Since about, we haven't, we've never told them anything about ourselves, Ewan, but no. we can be mysterious. I want to be mysterious. Yeah, we're like the leaders of this weird cult. Yay. Here are you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm Val, and... I like putting things in order. Okay. It was a good start. Yeah, Why good start are we qualified first. to take part in this thing? I mean, I like a polarising opinion, I have yeah. to say. You're very opinionated. I'm, as far as I'm yeah. concerned, at any given time, anything is either the best uh-huh. thing in the world or the worst thing in the world. Cool. So yeah. I, that's my qualification. Mm, this could be a very dynamic episode then. Very everything, good. We, <laughs> everything we add is either at the top or at the bottom. Yeah. Mm, this could change things a lot. We have 15 things on our list at the moment, and today we're going to add at least a few more. Mm-hmm. So let's get started with that. In the first segment that I like to call Bring a Thing. In this segment, everyone on the podcast brings a thing, and it can be anything that they want. It doesn't have to be related to the theme, which we'll get to later. Does anyone... Want to start? Since I'm a old hand at this, I guess mm. I should take the plunge first. So I brought today, and I don't know if there's actually a term for it, but my thing I brought is spare or loose change you find on the street. Okay. Oh, okay. Put it in your pocket on the street. Yeah, yeah. I Stuff see. like if you see like a penny or something you find on the street. Mm. I don't know if there's a term for that. Pick it up. Yeah. Like, good luck. Exactly. The good old rhyme. They say that. But I, I mean, unless you get run over one. That's while true. you're bending down, I suppose if it's on the street or the pavement. The yeah, it could also be quite dirty and might have germs. Might have germs. Probably has germs. Yeah, it could be it a trap. Money. It could be a trap. Someone's left for you to find. Yeah, they well, do that, don't they? So some people glue the things. Like, yeah, to, <laughs> to the pavement. That's true. Sometimes. And then you pick it up or you try to, yeah. and everyone around you laughs, just like yeah. bursts into. <laughs> Mad laughter, oh, yeah. you, you fool! How could you have been caught in such a so, an obvious ruse? So this is the worst thing in the world, right? Next, <laughs> got that sorted out fast. Well, I, I brought it up because literally today, uh, when I was coming back to my house, I was on, I was trying to get a bus, and I reached for for my change on that, and I just was ten p short of a bus fare. <laughs> And I was thinking, I don't really want to like get money out of the bank and then have to pay for mm. something uh-huh. to actually get change for the bus. And do you know how few products there actually are in stores that give you enough to actually have change for the bus the right amount? It's very minute oh. amount of stuff. So <laughs> yes. It's really annoying. I'm going off topic a no, little bit here. Get, but... like getting bus change, I mean, that's not the topic we're talking about, but that's one of the most annoying things to me. I can't believe we're still, at least in Edinburgh, we still have a system where you need to get cha- the exact change for mm. the bus. Yeah. And that is just a constant source of stress where you're like, 
I just need a pound and then you go to the shops and you put in you know five pounds in the self checkout you've worked out that you've bought enough stuff that you'll get two pounds changed mm. and it comes out as it's a two pound coin which isn't <laughs> any good because it's less than two pounds on the bus and they only take exact change so it's just infuriating it's very but infuriating. anyway that's not for, the for a very long time the buses in Glasgow were one pound eighty five which oh is the absolute God. worst amount of money to yeah. have to get the exact change. That's they just want you to put in two pounds and yeah. just give up, keep the rest. Mm. But that's how they win, and we can't let that happen. No, we can't. But anyway, so, yes. Anyway, so uh, I was... Money that you pick up on yeah. the streets. <laughs> because money I pick up on the street. So today I was walking to Prince Street, and I didn't have the right amount of money, and I was thinking, oh, if I get to this point in Prince Street, and I haven't, like, because I'm scanning around to see if there is any actual change in the street. <laughs> Thinking, oh, this could this could save me. This this kind of someone else's very minute bad luck could save me. This is the uh, rock and roll life. Can you any this is amazing. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm scanning it. I think there's a certain point I put where I'm like, if I don't get reach this point, if I reach this point and I've not got it, I'll just I'll have to take money out, kind of thing. And then after a little bit of time, five p. Okay, so I just need five p more. Five p more. <laughs> Getting there, getting the last bit, sort of scanning around desperately trying to find what. It, look down. 50 pence piece. Woohoo! Wow. Victory. Okay. Not to see what I needed, wow. like Perfect. more. Like you ask the universe and it provides. But did you have the right change then? Or was 50 too big? Is no, no, no. Same no. problem as Alex. I still had a lot of other shrapnel oh, in my okay. pocket, so it was good. fine. So good. I was I was still in good nick. But uh, but yeah, so in that extent, change if I on the street can be quite useful. Yeah. But my other thing is like, at what point do you not pick it up? Like what's the mm. lowest amount that's like that's, that's a good question too cheap for me to actually waste my time <laughs> bending down, down and picking it up because I'm probably at the the five pence point saying that I had to pick up a five pence to team because I was that desperate but <laughs> still I mean, where is everyone in that I don't think I've resorted to wandering the streets looking for <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't but. put myself in this situation. <laughs> no, no. I think I'd... now I'm going to start wandering the streets looking for money. That's, you should. That's a good it's plan. not a bad idea. Yeah, if you can I didn't make... realize there was I mean, so much out there. Fifty-five p for a minute more work. cost-effective than what I do at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh 55p in Princess Street isn't that long. I mean, no. <laughs> it's, it's a big street, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I think it would be 10p. 10p for me would be the lowest denomination that I pick up. I, I would think I would say 10 as well. Yeah. Five I'm, I'm pretty little. sure I'd pick up pennies because <laughs> oh, they're lucky. <laughs> Because it's free money. Yeah, free money is free money. You can't really say yeah. no for that. That's true. Yeah, so I think it's, I mean, it's good. I'm not, uh, yeah, I, say, don't know if it's... I, I don't I'm not in the kind of saying it's best or worst. I'm kind of interested to see where it's going to land on all, uh, where the coin will fall. Oh. But, um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but let's see. I think, mm. I mean, it's loose change in the street on the everything versus everything oh. list. Um, it's good, it's, but it's mucky. I think mm. it's less than the Loch Ness Monster. Really? Hmm. I'd say so. I think I'd get more value in life from the Loch Ness Monster than pennies, pennies in the street. street. Would you put it above Coca-Cola and below the Loch Ness Monster? Because you, you use Coca-Cola to clean it. You can Ooh. use Coca-Cola to clean your change, so it's quite useful in itself. Mm, I think I've probably gotten more out of Coca-Cola than change the street. Well, it saved me some inconvenience today, but apart from that, I don't know. I don't even know if it's as good as breakfast in bed, really. Yeah, I think it's We know that we had bed. problems last time with breakfast in bed, but still, it's, it's, it's a nice thing, breakfast in bed, to have. Mm. And it's probably worth more than the pennies if you're it's, going with pure monetary value. I'd say it's better than when a dog follows you and it isn't your dog. I find this very difficult because clearly mm. sometimes the change in the street is an important thing, but usually it's just, I don't care. Mm. There's change in the street. Mm. If it's, it's never, a fi- I've never seen a 50p in the street. I don't, I'm not sure I believe this story. <laughs> um, well, I don't have it anymore. Give it to the busman. So. Okay, right, fine. <laughs> yeah, it's about unicorn in terms of like change goals. So. Yeah, I, I think you were very lucky there. Um, yeah. I, I think it's, I don't think it's a very good thing. I think it's, I think it's Cocoa Pop sort of level. There, there or thereabouts. Mm. Mm. I, I don't think it's, it's as good as Cocoa Pops because I like Cocoa Pops. <laughs> good. I, I'm, I'm going to object to the position of Cocoa Pops if you're yeah, this. I would have put it higher too. What do you think is more germy? A dog following you that you don't know or picking up pennies in the street? Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's been a couple of days, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a dog th- actually. A dog might be more germy. Probably, but you're not necessarily going to touch. Yeah, but I know. I just feel like that the dog scenario 
is a lot more inconvenient. True. If you get and you kind of benefits from the coins on the street. Yeah, you can uh, coins the street still has a good sort of thing too. You get a bit of extra money if you need it sort of thing. And so. it's but it's not necessarily as good as breakfast in okay. bed. Okay, I don't think. Is so. that the consensus then? So. Below breakfast in bed, above when the dog falls. Yeah, yeah. I, I could get on board with that. Yeah, yeah I can. Yeah. I can see that. I was I would have put it higher probably, but you're right. I mean, there's not that much of a downside to it, but it's so there's not much of an upside to it's it just, either. It's so. just. We don't care, you know. <laughs> when I was a kid, like, and you'd found a pound, it'd be like, this is the best day of my life. Again, that's never happened to me either. You, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't think I've found a pound. Paid you with gold. Gold. <laughs> we need to follow <laughs> you. I only have like, a rare amount of time. Are these definitely but... on the street? You're not walking past buskers or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> taking I'm not them out of the stealing house. from buskers. <laughs> Uh, well, but that's lady. the thing, Mark. That you're you, you're walking in a life of your head held high. Mine's pointed straight at the ground. Oh, so. okay, fine, right. Well, that's what it is. So yeah. well, I'm gonna what am I gonna call it? Picking up loose change in the street. <laughs> loose, I just loose change the street. It's you and foraging. Street. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. Done that. There we go. We've spent a very long time talking about it. Let's move on. Where did I thought? <laughs> <laughs> Shall I go I'll, next? I'll go on. Go on then. My one is balloons. Balloons? Balloons. Because mm, right. in general they're nice and they make people happy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, they're colourful and they remind me of parties. And they make good noises when they pop. Mm. Oh, <laughs> controversial. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, and you can also get big ones. You can get big ones like space weather balloons that do scientific research. Mm, that's true. Yeah. And ones that, a lot of things. Ones that carry Richard Branson. In- you indeed. Can get those as well. I-, I was thinking more party balloons, but right, okay. but, but water balloons, water balloons. I thought I thought could be yeah. Can, can you get water quite, balloons? Water as well? balloons. Yeah. There's lots of mm-hmm. positives to balloons, but I also know some people are afraid of balloons. Mm. True. <laughs> I'm slightly afraid of, of balloons, just in case they pop. Just because of the fear of loud noises, which is a natural yeah. evolutionary thing. Yeah. That's perfectly yeah. sensible. Yeah. What about that squeaking noise they make mm. when they rub together or they're holding yeah. up against the thing? That's not nice. That's yeah. like, it's a bit like fingernails on a blackboard. Yeah. True. In fact, it's worse than fingernails. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand the problem with Anyway, we're not talking about that. <laughs> Mm. And you do get allergies sometimes oh. to balloons. I always think, when you pop a balloon, is there a chance that a bit of it is going to fly in your eye and blind you? Yes. I guess there's a small chance. Be. You should wear safety glasses at all times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, that always slightly bothers me, because people do it with such reckless abandon <laughs> sometimes. But when it all stays together, you know, it, all of it stays joined up. There's not like a oh, big I see, I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. It doesn't explode, it oh. pops. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's most of, of it will stay in one blob. You'd have been a very. And you'd hope it would go down because of gravity. Are we becoming a science oh. podcast? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> a little bit. Science. You know science well. <laughs> bring that knowledge to us. Anyway, so and you can also make animals out of balloons. You can. Yeah. They're quite cool. Mm-hmm. It's I used to be able balloon. to make like balloon animals if I have a very crude oh. variety. Here's Not the thing. Not in vulgar, but just little. Is this yeah. where your balloon phobia comes from? No, I just, I'm just not, I wouldn't say it's a phobia. I just, I don't particularly like knowing that a balloon is going to burst mm. soon. It's like waiting for a gunshot in a play. Yeah. <laughs> or something, if you know there's going to be a gunshot. Yeah. But that could be exciting as well. Here's could the thing like, I don't oh. like about balloons. They smell terrible. And they make your hands mm. smell terrible if you've been blowing them up, mm. or, or particularly tying the knots. Mm. Uh, the, smell. the rubber smell is, or mm. whatever it is they put in. Tying or knots as well is. Oh, that's impossible. So oh, that's, yeah. yeah, that's the worst thing in the world. Next, right? But it is, really it is good when you learn how to do it because then you're like a proper grown up. Yeah. Right? Now I can <laughs> do that, this myself. Is that when you become? Does <laughs> 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 yeah. that mean you're not yeah, proper grown ups then, Alex? Yeah. yeah, I like them. I, I usually have them at my birthday parties, and I don't know why. I just, for some reason, I always feel the need to buy a bag of like 20 balloons and blow them all up. Mm-hmm. And they just sit there, like on the floor. Sometimes people play keepy uppy with them. But, yeah. yeah. There's something fun about just like having like a ball of colour in yeah. a sort of room. Yeah, it's better than nothing. It's yeah. better than just a blank bit of empty air. <laughs> oh. Some air in a contained <laughs> bit of rubber. Yeah. You I'd can get some with lights in as well and glitter and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. cool. There's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of balloon. Yeah. Balloons is a big topic mm. actually. All the ones that you put like a, th- a squeaky thing on the end and it makes noise like that. Wow. <laughs> 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 
I, I don't know. What <laughs> okay, I'll okay. trust you. I'm not sure that comes over in the audio. <laughs> I do hate though when you're blowing the balloon and it's just coming to that point where like if you keep blowing, you feel oh, like explosion or something. And my mind just is like the kind of the nails on the chalkboard for me kind of thing. This like mm. that sort of fear of like oh my god. But you kind of you don't want to sort of like stop before it's reasonably filled as well kind of thing but I always think they're going to burst on me when I'm blowing them up I mean there's all the other balloons like the hot air balloons and everything I think that's the one sort of specific thing are we restricting ourselves to party balloons I was thinking party balloons I think okay party balloons balloons, yeah and you can spend hours my favourite thing when I was little was a balloon and I had a little you know you bash it like this you can can spend hours going bash 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 onto the balloon with a bit of string and so you can if you're an only child like me <laughs> no, no, that okay. can provide a whole afternoon of fun <laughs> <laughs> so if you get so you get a balloon tie it with a ribbon and then you go bash 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 and you sort of it comes back to you like you've got a friend yeah 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 exactly. <laughs> right, okay. right. I, I feel like we have to put this higher than me. <laughs> it seems to me balloons have no redeeming features whatsoever except one there is a great photograph that does the rounds on the internet every now and again uh-huh. where the current president of the United States is visiting Scotland. This is a long time before he was oh, the president yes. of the United States. And a man is stood behind him with a balloon. <laughs> he holds it over the top of his head. And you should go and find the photo to have a look at what happens because it's very, very funny. Oh, but this is the only good thing I can say for balloons. Well, Otherwise, I would put balloons right at the bottom of the list. Oh, oh, they below they Piers Morgan. They Pretty kept, much, yeah. Oh my they God. kept Val company as a child. Though. <laughs> <laughs> balloons are my friend. The okay, then above Piers Morgan. We're yes, there. Piers Morgan didn't keep me company as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for the best, to be honest. Well, hurrah for that. <laughs> um... So yeah. where would you put them, Val? Yeah. Um, the where would I put them? Your thing, um, so. They're a similar level to Coca-Cola and Loch Ness Monster. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say... Hmm, actually, maybe above, maybe even higher. I All would right. say... not. They're not as high as having good teeth. So mm-hmm. somewhere between having good teeth and porridge. Yeah. That's me. Mm. But I, I, maybe I'm being uh, too balloon friendly. I fundamentally disagree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Alright, let's balloon, get into this. Where, where are your balloons? Balloons are terrible things. There's nothing good comes There's out of them. There's nothing balloons. good comes out of them. No. Uh, at all? Nothing good about balloons. No, what, even what, like if the you, fun what if you were underwater? Stuff? Right, drowning. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't be able to get the knot out. There, I wouldn't be able to get the knot out. Then you would have air. Good mm. things could come out of that balloon. No. Air could come out. No. There's always that fun thing where you've got a helium balloon and you can sort of like breathe in the helium mm. and talk in a squeaky voice. But that's more helium than it is balloon. That, that's the helium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the balloons are at least the container bringing you the helium. So mm. I think we're gonna have to come up with a compromise between it being at the bottom of the list and it being I, that near the top. Because I I would spread it somewhere five. between those places. I think. Okay, where, where are you thinking then? Maybe like between Coca-Cola and Cocoa Pots or ish. But that's mainly because I want to separate those two because they look too similar on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. It's just annoying me. They're in good company. Well, where would you put it, you? Um, I They're kinda... both airy things. Cocoa Pops have got air in, balloons have got air in, and so has Coca-Cola. True, yeah. Bubbles. But but we're not grouping things by how much air they have. That's true. We're grouping things by how much air they have. That's a whole other podcast. How good they are. Balloons are generally fun things, bring lots of joy to kids and that kind of stuff. But again, like, there are a few things that sort of miniature scare you, where it's going to, like, burst on you or that kind of thing. Or they're inconvenient in terms of, like, tying a balloon is a really just... It's a chore. It's a real chore to sort of do. So... It's got pros and cons. I would probably go with you, Alex, where it's like between Coca-Cola and Coca Pops, maybe. I think I'm overruled, aren't I? Me too. Mm. No. It's, it's a strange. We've never really had a, a situation where people disagree this strongly before. Mm. <laughs> we don't really have a protocol for this. So you have one person about this level here, a couple yeah. of people at this level here, and one person at this level here. So yeah. this level here is kind of average. It okay. is average, yeah. Yeah, so uh-huh. yeah, should we say between Coca and Coca Pops? And it makes me happy the balloons are near the other air, air-based air products. Okay, okay. We need to keep, as long as it keeps you happy. <laughs> are we going to need the, to keep the air-based things together, is that? <laughs> well, the dog will have to come up. Mm. He's got air inside. That's true. Depends how he's farted that day. <laughs> <laughs> how high he needs to be. Parental guidance, explicit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Okay. I mean, arguably, Berlin, Berlin has got, probably got quite a lot of air in it. It does? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's hope so at the moment. Anyway, Switzerland. So. Yeah. Um, Famous for having air in it. <laughs> and Piers Morgan. <laughs> Hot air. Anyway. So. Yes, so who's, who's next? Well, Shall I go? It's me and Mark. Yeah. I would like to bring a haircut. Or rather, the whole process of getting a oh, haircut. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. This, to me, is a chore. This is a <laughs> terrible thing. <laughs> this is a thing I do as little as possible, mm-hmm. only when it's absolutely required. 
will I get a haircut? I have a few problems with getting a haircut. One, I have to phone the hairdresser and ask when I can come to have the haircut. Oh, well, because know. although there are people who say, oh, you can come in any time, if you go in any time, they look at you like you're insane. So you have to phone them. Don't like phoning people. That's a whole other podcast. Okay. Um, <laughs> next thing, they ask what haircut you want. I don't know. Third thing, I wear glasses, right? And in order to get your hair cut, you have to take your glasses off. Mm. And then they expect you to know what they're doing, and they ask you whether it's all right or not. I don't know. I can't see. <laughs> so, haircuts. Terrible things. Mm. Shouldn't be required. Shouldn't be allowed. Bottom of the list. Bottom of the list. Fuck. Okay, bottom of the list. <laughs> oh, here we go. Right. Okay. If you didn't get your hair cut, there would be numerous problems. Mm. I mean... You wouldn't be able to see the loose change on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yep. Can... We, we, well, I never see any anyway. So. <laughs> Pick any up. I mean... Um... Go on your mouth when you're trying to blow up balloons. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. You would just have terrible problems drinking Coca-Cola. All Get all right in the way. So you could see long hair being a bit of a pain for daily activity if you didn't get a cut. I don't know. Girls manage perfectly well. Oh, good point. No, I think girls have like <laughs> maintenance haircuts to sort of keep it in the style which mm. they're needing it in. I don't know much about girls or haircuts. Mm. I, I've never actually been to uh, to get a haircut at an actual haircut giving place. I don't even know what they're called. Hairdresser, I guess. <laughs> um, Barbers, barber, hairdresser, yeah. so on. Um, because I had very long hair as a as a child to the point where I was mistaken for a girl a lot of the time. Um, I cut my hair myself sometimes. Sometimes my mum cut my hair. It was always a complete mess and a shambles. Um, and then when I got older, I started losing it. So now I just shave it. Um, so yeah, hair isn't my specialist you, subject. Do you regard shaving it as a chore? Or, yes. Or do you... I did it earlier today, and it was annoying. I always put it off for as long as possible. To be honest, Mark, I think you're going to the wrong barbers. I okay. think they're treating you very badly over there. And... <laughs> they treat me very well, actually. Do they? I found I found a good one. Okay. Because but... I think a part of it is like getting the right barbers. Someone that will do the job that you need it to do. You, you, you need to get to somewhere where you can say the usual. Yeah, and usual. even if even if they don't remember, they then do something that is vaguely right. And to yeah. be honest, they don't remember because I never go. Yeah, exactly. You know? So I guess it's all my own fault. But <laughs> That's anyway. the thing. You have to be on top of those kind of things. And yeah, I mean, I guess a haircut isn't ever like a fun experience to a certain extent. I mean, maybe there's some people that do enjoy going to the hair salon or getting their hair cut kind of things or likes that whole sort of looking good and stylish and all that kind of stuff. But at most of us, I'm sure, it's just like it's something we have to do in order to sort of keep a certain level of appearance but it is kind of uh, it's also unless there's good teeth having good teeth i mean having good teeth is again like a, almost a chore you have to sort of do you no one really likes brushing their teeth or the majority of people don't like brushing their teeth but at the end of the day it's sort of good to have a reasonable yeah, level like, of kind of grooming teeth are quite useful though yeah, they're like useful hair's, hair's a pest it keeps I don't you like, warm I, don't I suppose hair. i kind of wish it would just go away yeah, yeah. it has for me, but I guess hair is not as useful as teeth, which can lead to going and further down the list than uh, the hair. I haven't been to for a haircut, but it sounds like it would not be fun for me. Like it sounds quite socially awkward, and you have an excuse not to talk to the dentist because they're jamming objects into your mouth. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's right. the hairdresser, you kind <laughs> Absolutely of right. have to either make conversation or I, I imagine sit in awkward silence. And I, I should get think right. I should be thinking of something to say right now. I, I love the old joke where uh, the hairdresser says, "How do you want your hair cut?" and the person in the chair says, "In silence." <laughs> That's great. That's why you need the right barber who will just like know that you want to be in silence or just playing something on the radio or something. <laughs> but I, know, I mean. But the thing that people most can like change about themselves mm. is haircuts. They can have like very short hair, very long hair, very interesting haircuts. Mm. It's something that like people can customize about themselves. That's true. The majority of the stuff of your own appearance or body, you can't really do much yeah. with, to be honest. But without... then you have to explain to someone else how you want to customize your appearance. Yeah. Which is one of my issues with it. I don't know. And even if I did, if, even if I knew what I wanted to look like, I don't know how to explain to someone else mm. what, what, what that is. I mean, what, what are the haircuts called? They have names? They do have some Take a picture. Names. Take a picture. Yeah, right. Right. Find a picture. How do I find a picture? Someone On a magazine would like to or look like, And then say, this please. This please. I've yes. done that. I might <laughs> point to something and like, I say, oh, something along the lines of this. And he's mm-hmm. like, perfect, we'll do that. Well, I've done that as well. And if I remember rightly, the guy said, uh, yeah, but you won't look like that. <laughs> Again, the and I, said, and, I, and I said, yeah, well, it won't be black and white for a start. 
Oh dear. Yeah. I mean, my point of just like, it's like one thing that people can customise about themselves quite easily is, True, is kind of a good thing. This is more about the experience of getting a haircut, I think. I think so it is. It's, it's I, the oh, so it's not the whole... The whole it's concept of getting haircuts, a haircut. I, think it's, I think it's just... So that's a different thing, Stalin. Yeah, you know. I guess it probably is. Okay. Where, where would you put it? Right at the bottom? Mark, is yours? I, I would put it right at the bottom. Mm. Well... Would I rather talk to Piers Morgan or have a haircut? <laughs> I wouldn't like Piers Morgan to cut my hair, put it like that. <laughs> um, I would put it right at the bottom. I hate it. Wow. Well, nothing is worse at the moment than having your haircut. Nothing we have yet discussed. Even oh. balloons is worse than having your haircut. No, I, w- I would put it a little higher. Maybe, maybe second last, actually. It just seems like something that I would hate. So, what about you guys? I mean... I'm pretty fine with having the hair. I mean, again, I don't like make a regular thing of it. Maybe just above Pierce Morgan. I don't know because they feel like like there's people out there in the world that like having the haircut. There's people out there in the world that make but a, not make, here. make a no. But we have to take them into consideration. No, we, don't. we do have to. People in the world that have a living cutting people's hair. Oh, and good luck to them. But we're not saying that it's like <laughs> you evil can't... and, and no, 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 no. shouldn't cut hair. It's definitely worse than saying goodbye on the phone. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't like that either. Is, I think you can, you can have a worse experience with a haircut than you can like saying goodbye on the phone. So probably... Because as part of getting a haircut, you yeah. need to say goodbye on the phone. So for a start, we've, we're already yeah. done. I've never called up for a hair thing, ever. Oh. And I don't know what you're on about, to be honest. But... <laughs> I think you need to swap uh, swap numbers about barbers. Yeah, I think you probably do. <laughs> I think so. Uh, well, so I'd say it's between saying goodbye on the phone and the bus one. Yeah, I could maybe see that. Okay, there's an upside. Val, how about you and your haircut experiences? Uh, I'm prepared to accept that. I don't seem to hate it quite as much as Mark. I would I would say somewhere, like you say, somewhere de- somewhere between saying goodbye on the phone and and the, the whole bus stop scenario is about like... Yeah. It's, okay. it's pretty low, Mark. Yeah. I think I think we're all happy. Yeah. I, I can accept that. I'll accept that. Okay. I'll accept that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll accept that. Cool. So, my thing this week is water. Mm. I have some here actually. Mm. Just take a sip of it to remind myself what it's like. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I thought water was quite a a big thing to talk about. I mean, it covers a lot of things, including the Earth's surface. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. Quite a lot of our body is made of it. We need it to survive. Mm -hmm. It puts out fires, which can be useful. (laughs) Fish can, can breathe it. Uh, what else to say about water is yeah, refreshing. Have, you can't have life without water. No. Most drinks contain water. In fact, yeah. probably all drinks contain water. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, water. I think it's good. I think, personally, I would put it at the top of the list. But oh, oh, oh interesting. Oh, water is better, water is better than, than Berlin. Berlin. Hmm. I think, it's I mean, more, your point is right. Like, we need it to survive. Like, if you take water out of the planet right now, that's us done. I think if you argue against water, you're basically arguing against all life. Yeah, to certain Which extent. Which is a valid, it's a valid discussion to be had. Would I the think... universe be better without life in mm. it? <laughs> yes. Um, Don't know if I want to get all the way into that today, though. That's a very deep discussion. But, I mean, again, it is a factor and it is very integral water to us. We are part of it. It's a drink that we have, or we should have at least every day. The only thing I don't like about water is when it's raining. I don't like rain. I like Which, rain sometimes. Sometimes, but most of the time it's not great. Yeah, being out in the rain and becoming wet is not a great thing. Unless Drowning is not a good thing. Drowning is not a good thing. True. Drowning I mean, is pretty There bad. are these things, but it's hard to hold drowning against water when it also is required for you to stay alive. What know? about when there's a hole in the bottom of your shoe and it gets in? And it that makes you, actually, your right. foot wet. Bottom of the list. Bottom of the list. <laughs> Bottom of the list. I, I would say that water has pro, a lot of pros, and those pros are really strong, mm. and it's only just got a few cons, but just those cons are there to say that water isn't perfect. Is water better than Coca-Cola? Yes. <laughs> it's I much more healthy. In most ways, it probably is. I've never really drank too much water and got sick of it. But that may be because it doesn't have much of a taste. Yeah, I mean, water's taste is like, it's the vanilla of drink. It feels it's the beige. Nothingness. Or... Yeah, yeah. It, but probably our body sort of yeah. wants that because we want to drink it so much we don't want it to have a flavour or so, so we kind of put it on the, z- the zero on the spectrum kind of mm. thing. Yeah. So it's hard to talk about water because it's so... You don't need as much water as you think you do. You don't. Because you get a lot of water from food. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't necessarily need six yeah, glasses a day. The, I mean, the, the water you're getting from food is also included in the category of water. So. Yeah. Oh, oh, true enough, true enough. So water's sneaking in somewhere. So we're all yeah. happy with water quite 
quite high on the list, I think. Yeah. yeah. So are you saying the first? You're saying I the top. I argue number for number one, okay. partly because, I mean, it's essential for all life. And I quite like drinking it. I drink it a lot. And also Berlin has been on there since... It was the first thing that was brought in the first episode and it's still number one. Yeah. And I'm worried it's just going to get established yeah. there forever. Yeah. James isn't here, so let's rip it down Berlin. So. <laughs> I mean, let's not... Fresh yeah. city apart. I mean, to be fair, Berlin would not exist without water. True. Yeah. yeah. But water would exist without Berlin. That's right. Yeah. right. Water. Water then. Number well, one. Number straight one. in. New no. one number one. Number one. Yay. Wow. Yay. Congratulations, water. Well done. Yay. <laughs> splash. <laughs> Make a real splash water as well. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll leave now. Uh, yes. The answer was clear. The answer clear. <laughs> and we will move on. <laughs> From Bring a Thing to the next section, which is Cram Session. So in Cram Session, what we do is we take five minutes to research a subject that we don't know that much about. And it may be that we already do know stuff about it because I haven't actually checked. (laughs) But I'm guessing no one has a particularly in-depth knowledge. Does anyone know that much about pangolins? I've never no. heard of it before. No. Okay, what that's good. It? It's a kind of animal, that's all that I'm telling you. Can you me. spell it for me? Okay, oh it's P-A-N-G-O-L-I-N. Okay, I found it. Yes, so we're going to research pangolins for five minutes and then we're going to come back and decide where they go on our list of things. So the five minutes starts when I find the timer app on my phone, <laughs> which is... Uh, no. Yo. Well, pangolins then. How much did you know about them beforehand, Alex? Um, I basically, I think I googled obscure animals or something. <laughs> okay. And that was one of the things that came up. And then I, looked, I saw up one picture of one and that was about it. So yeah, what have we learned that is relevant to the situation? Well, they're funny looking things. Yeah, I mm-hmm. thought they would be furry and cute. Uh, so sorry. they're not like so they look, cute. A, <laughs> look a bit like dragons. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're, uh, for... Listeners at home, they kind of look like sort of scaly armored anteaters, and that's yes. what's right. Yeah, they look like a cross between an armadillo and an anteater and much. a dragon. Some kind of dragon, yeah. Mm, which is cool. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're also, I can yeah. find them kind of cute, but I find weird yeah. things cute. In some ways, if it's weird looking, I find it cute because I feel slightly sorry for it. Oh. So there's a weird little sort of inverse correlation be- between how conventionally cute it is and how cute I find it, but yeah, I don't know. I like them. I'm not sure they're really that cute though, because I read a thing that said each pangolin can eat up to 70 million insects in a year. Mm. So wow. they're not going to be very cute to 70 million insects. No, True. only them. That's, yeah. uh, that's a lot of insects. Insects aren't that cute though, to be honest. Though. No, no. But all 70 million of them can't be wrong, surely. They, um, they're also square acid. Did you get that? Like you skunks? That? Yeah. 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 Mm, that's yeah. true. Acid that's, squirters. Mm, that put me off mm. them a little bit. A little bit. But <laughs> when they sort of roll up into a little ball, they kind of look a little cute. So. Yeah. yeah. And uh, apparently their main predator, apart from humans, which we'll get more into later, mm. is lions and that kind of stuff. Mm. And if they actually roll up into a ball, even a lion struggles to sort of bite through their scales. They're like mm. pretty much the only animal that's all scales, like on the outside anyway. At least mm. from what I was getting from the <laughs> yeah. Telegraph, so that's my source for you okay. guys. It's sort of like a really hardcore hedgehog. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're Sonic Hedgehog with Makes armor them, yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Quite um, cool in their own way. And with them catching the insects, it's all because of their tongue, like the yeah. anteater. Their tongue is actually longer than their body. Yeah. Up to 40, 40 centimetres. centimetres. Long. Jeez, that's a lot of time. Wow. Yeah, mm. that's a long time. That'd be a, a good evening right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> the longest time, like giraffes have the longest tongue. Do they? Yeah, giraffes oh. are 90 centimetres. They always look funny oh, with their tongue sticking out. Them. They're like yeah. sort of doing a goofy Not a lot of room, yeah. room for it though. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, compared yeah. to the length of their body, you're right, this is this is pretty impressive. It's quite impressive. Yeah, because right. giraffes have got a lot more no, more places to put their tongue. <laughs> yeah, totally. This guy's got to get it Unless in there just somewhere. Must probably wind yeah. it up or something. How, what do they do with it when they're not licking things? It's kind of like a yo-yo. Oh, is it round up round? Like, a, like one of those licorice things? I mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess they're digesting their 70 million insects. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There's eight species yeah. of pangolin as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Eight different species, so... Four in Asia and four in Africa. 
We should really have <laughs> broken it down into the individual species, but I think maybe that's a good store. Group. Maybe that's yeah. for another day. Another we day. could specialise later. Later on. Yeah. Yeah. Once we've gone through everything, we can, we can <laughs> yeah, go yeah. back and fill in the yeah. blanks. Yeah, more, yeah. more specific. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've got terrible eyesight. Yeah. Yeah, very, yeah. very poor eyesight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, very poor hearing as well. Room. Yeah. <laughs> of the eight <laughs> species that, that there are, there's like um, one that's like, we'll go out in the daytime, the rest are nocturnal, mm. so mm. fair enough. Which also makes me feel a bit like, sorry for them. Yeah. Oh, I, I think a, 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 lot of this, a lot of this placement for me is going to be based on feeling sorry for them, partly because I feel bad that humans hunt them and have like mm. almost made them like, some of them extinct yeah. like according to the mm. telegraph they're the most hunted species on earth oh. yeah if they're hunted for their meat and their skin and their scales, scales. and yeah. i saw like a picture on the wikipedia page of uh, like a coat of armor made out of pangolin oh, wow. scales which is kind of crazy mm. nothing need it anymore really so probably not oh, you could really. probably stop doing that now yeah. people yeah We're stop not- hunting the cute things <laughs> i also read that you, you nobody knows how long they live yeah, mm-hmm. that's weird. They're like the oldest has yeah. been 19 years or something, yeah. but you still... But that's still an assumption, because we don't know how long old it was when, when they found they, it. They keep killing them yeah. for their skin. <laughs> so they could be like immortal, immortal pangolins. Yeah. They yeah. could be, yeah. yeah but we just cool. don't know. They were, a, they were a pointless answer on an episode of Pointless I saw the other week. <laughs> I, don't really? that, so yeah. I don't know if it was animals beginning with P or something that's like that. That's the episode. Because <laughs> I remember thinking at the time, what are they? And here mm. we are today. Here yeah. we are. In general. A week later. Here we are. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Cool I, name. I have no idea where to put them, to be honest. Because I like them. I like them. And and I feel sorry for them. And I feel like we. it would be adding an insult to injury to put them low on the list. No. After we've almost like made them extinct. But the, the nearest thing is Loch Ness Monster. Are they I, I better was, or worse than a Loch Ness Monster? I was thinking mm. that. I mean, they might be similar to a Loch Ness Monster. We don't, oh, we don't we really don't know. know. Yeah. Hmm. They're probably, I mean... Maybe they are the Loch Ness Monster. As I, as I understand it, the thing I'm supposed to say at this point is... But pangolins are real and the Loch Ness Monster mm. isn't, I think. I Prove think it, though. As well, James may not that. be. I mean, to be fair, pangolins could not be real and we wouldn't be any the wiser. It could just be all a conspiracy that people on the internet have come up with, but um, yeah. and pointless. Well, they've taken in pointless, if, yeah, if they have. That's true. You know. Pointless wouldn't have fallen for that kind of I wouldn't have thought okay, so. Okay, yeah, I trust pointless, pointless so elements. I'm going to say that pangolins are real uh. until proven otherwise. Hmm. Are so, pangolins as good as porridge? They don't have good teeth, I know that. They don't Ooh. have teeth at all. Oh, yeah. They just right. use their tongue and yeah. they do what birds do and they swallow small stones and, yeah. and grind things up. Oh, yeah. that's quite smart. Mm-hmm. Um, so they don't have teeth. But so they, they, don't they, have to they should about, be above having good yeah, teeth. They don't have to worry about Coca Cola. <laughs> so the, well, they're, they're better yeah. than that. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, in that's in very... the other sense of the word. Yeah. <laughs> How about compared to Switzerland? Yes, this is difficult. Yeah, mm. a pangolin versus Switzerland. The thing is, is that almost their complete unknownness to me makes it feel like they've not had that much influence on my life <laughs> and oh. on much of the world. Yeah, they could. Western they could not anyway. exist, and you would never. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know until this like five minutes ago that they did exist. Whereas cocoa pops, for example, you've known about for some time. I have known about cocoa pops. <laughs> They're definitely time. better than that. Oh. And porridge, I feel even that's had more effect on me and most people probably than pangolins. I don't know, maybe their use is like medicines for people in Asia has like done nothing to help them at all because it obviously doesn't work. So. But people in Scotland use porridge for medicine and that doesn't seem to do very much. Well, it's good for your health, I guess, in general, but... Maybe pangolin meat is as well. But it's tasting. Yeah, it's, I think we're in the right area there. It's maybe. tough to do exactly where to put. I them. think I feel like it should probably be. They should probably be above the Loch Ness monster just because they're they have the benefit of being real. Definitely um, more proof anyway. Yeah, above Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Mm, I like that bit, but I <laughs> but I almost feel like my guilt of about <laughs> pangolins is overrated. Well, don't don't let them guilt trip. Yeah. I I think they're better than porridge, so I think I think they must therefore be better than Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. If the, if the list is to be trusted. Yeah. Okay. We have to trust the list. What do you think, Val? Better than porridge. I think better than porridge, better than having good teeth. <laughs> Alright, wow. okay. Good teeth. I think they're between Switzerland and good teeth. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I do like my good teeth, but oh, they are having a tough time, so maybe they are. getting a bit above on our list would maybe they are. be a little bit of help to them. If they become less endangered, maybe we can bump them down. Yeah. To- so, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, I, if I don't have a problem with that. If they move to the second most hunted species on Earth, then we can bump them down. Okay. But I feel like we should publicise them by putting them high on our lists yeah. so that people. Yeah. 
I mean, they yeah. can curl up and they've got really long tongues. That's cool. Maybe we should mention like the initiatives also that are being done to sort of help them. There's um, Save Pangolins organization and an app called Roll of the Pangolins. They're being uh, an app to sort of like get awareness and like stop hunting pangolins or that. So. Uh, this year's World Pangolin Day was the 18th of February, so we've 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 missed oh, it as no, we, we record this. It. But uh, no, we I can... really want to do topical like subjects, so oh. I should have brought that on World Pangolin Day. But... Next February, <laughs> we'll we'll go back into it. Maybe we can revisit pangolins then. And so like... if you're listening to this on the 17th of February, it's tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Get ready. Happy Pangolin Day. Yeah. Prepare your costume, but don't make it out of real pangolins. No. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting it below Switzerland, above having good yeah. taste. Yeah. Yes. Go pangolins. Well, Oh, pangolins. Yeah. Yay. Wow. Hello um, to the, the pangolins listeners. <laughs> yeah. We got your back. Uh, so that's the end of cram session. We're moving on now to the thing about that. The theme today is America. Um, in a desperate oh. attempt to appeal to a wider audience, <laughs> <laughs> our list at the moment is quite Eurocentric. At least it was in the first episode. I don't think I don't, pangolins are really in Europe, so we've broadened our horizons a bit. But now we're broadening them more. I'm going to America. Mm. Woo! And you guys have all been to America quite recently, so yeah. I thought it'd be good to get your opinion on some of the things that are to do with America. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Who mm-hmm. would like to begin? I'd like to talk about American radio stations. Oh. Um, <laughs> popular in the room? Popular. Well, <laughs> American radio stations are weird. They have a lot of quirks. Some of them are good quirks. Some of them are just really, really strange. So, every American radio station has a name which is four letters long. Except some of them don't. And all of the ones that are, let me get this right, east of the Mississippi have a name that is four letters long and begins with K. Except the ones that don't. And all of the ones that are west of the Mississippi... No, I've got that wrong. All of the ones that are east have a name beginning with K, and all the ones that are... No. All the ones that... <laughs> I'll do this again. <laughs> all the ones that are west of the Mississippi have a name beginning with K, and all of the ones that are east of the Mississippi have a name beginning with W. For a start, that's the wrong way around. Anyway, they have to read out these names once an hour. That's the only time they use these names. The rest of the time, they call themselves something else. So they have two <laughs> names, for a start. Whoa. They have frequencies that only use the... Point one, point three, point five, point seven, and point nine of the dials, mm-hmm. and they all have a music format which is so niche it means they play about twenty records. <laughs> so they'll have sort of new rock, they'll have eighties alternative, they'll have adult contemporary, they'll have Spanish, which seems a bit unfair because that's anyway. And I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And they have adverts every five minutes. It's well, crazy. Mm-hmm. And every time I tune in, it's always playing the same record. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Gosh. Does anyone else have strong feelings on this? Because I don't know if I've ever actually listened to a real American radio station. I've listened to the ones in GTA games, and that's about it. Mm, that's um, as far as I go as well. I've which are quite them. entertaining, but that's because the adverts in them are parody adverts. So they're probably a bit more bearable than real ones. <laughs> <laughs> the real adverts are not, are not really bearable. Mm. Now, I've got inside knowledge on this. And oh, I know oh. that Mark has a bit of a, a man crush. I do have on, a man uh, crush on one particular on US one DJ. Particular American oh, right. DJ oh. who would not exist without American radio stations. Oh, that's a good point. You're, so, you're, you're ruining my. Yes. My, so my tell us about your man crush. Oh, which one? <laughs> The mean one, I, I, I was thinking the, the guy on the Broadway. You were thinking yeah. Broadway? Yeah, Broadway Bill Lee. Okay, so there's an American disc jockey called Broadway Bill Lee who works on uh, WCBS 101.1 in New York, which is also known as uh, CBS. And he does most of his links in rhyme. Oh. Um, and he sometimes videos himself doing them. And he'll talk right up to the vocal. And uh, it's really good. You should check him out online. Uh, but he's good, and Howard Stern is good, but everybody else is hopeless. It's, it's all, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. It, the, other, the other weird thing about the formats is, is it's amazing that Mumford & Sons appears to fit into every single, every single format. <laughs> you you can do. tune down an entire dial in the US and every single station can be playing Mumford & Sons. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. It's weird because you never really think of um, America having radio sort of stations. It always feels a bit sort of... <laughs> do you not? Do you not? It, they, I think they do. I mean, I really? Radio is quite an American sort of thing. Like, yeah. There are certain formats they have over there, like... Um, Sort of shock jock morning like zoo yeah. crew. Mm-hmm. Maybe. It's like Fraser. Fraser, Fraser, yeah. Fraser, I guess. Collins and. Yeah. And I mean, if you were talking about radio to me, I always think of like 
British Broadcasting Corporation and the radio and all that kind of stuff. It's just because you're patriotic. I'm patriotic and British now. But I, know, I just... Uh, and I always feel like America's got more sort of TV and they've like skipped from radio onto podcasts and all that kind of stuff now. So, uh, which podcasts are great. You should always listen to podcasts. Yeah. They're the best things ever. <laughs> radio sucks compared to that, I tell you that much. So, <laughs> I mean, from what you've described of American radio right there, makes it sound infuriating and terrible. So. It, it can be infuriating, yes. Mm. Although it does have it does have the occasional gem, as, mm. as Val points out. It do, do, you also get songs ahead. You get songs earlier in America. You, you do. Here. And there are many good podcasts mm. that have come out of uh, American radio programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. This, Ameri- this American Life. Yeah. NPR yeah. Yeah. is a good one. Anything from NPR is, is, mm-hmm. is very yeah. good. Mm. Of course, NPR is another example of what I was saying. There is there is no actual station called NPR. That's Jeez. that's a, that's, a, that's mm. a network of a bunch of other stations that have yeah. names like WQZB. Ah. You know, oh it's very complicated, mm. very annoying. And would you have the jam song? Would you, you have the jam song? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, the jam song is a, is a, a, a from Jam Jingles, a company that makes jingles for radio stations. Mm. And it, in one song, they listed all the different companies they'd make jingles for. And it's a good song. It's a great song. Mm. It lists a lot of uh, Kiss. And it, yeah, and it, and it explains a lot of the yeah. problems yeah. with with the names. Lots of the names are similar. So uh, they yeah. just keep listing the same names. Such a maze of W's and K's, and every city has a Kiss. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. where would you? It sounds like you have you have mixed. Oh. I kind of I have a kind of love hate relationship. Yeah, with them, I think. sounds like mm. that makes a very but difficult the, place. If everywhere was the same, you know, it wouldn't be fun going on holiday and going to road trips and stuff. So it's <laughs> fun that you have different types of radio station other places. This is American radio stations. So American radio stations, um, I would say, are better than Coca Cola. Whoa. Okay. Um, I think are they as good as the Loch Ness monster? Don't know. They exist, mm-hmm. unless you're you, and in which case he's he's never he's never realised they they did exist. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm thinking breakfast in bed area. Thinking breakfast in bed area. Yeah. Yeah, from the way you were, you were talking about that, yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be lower than... Well, you know, I, I came in with all the things I didn't like about them and then Val reminded me there are lots of things I do like about them. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, I'm very persuasive. You know, and I do, I do veer from one view to another. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If it was radio in general, I'd sort of have more an idea where to place it, but specifically American radio, I just, I don't know, I'm pretty like... I'm very just not caring about it, to be honest, and your description of how they've set up their whole system makes it sound like it's a stupid... Idiotic oh. system, and they need to go to hell. But at least they have well, a system. Maybe a bit extreme. We don't they have a system. They deliver Piers Morgan. <laughs> there. They have a system which they sometimes Ballast. ignore. Yeah. Yes. I'm happy with breakfast in bed area. So mm-hmm. American radio is not as good as Cocoa Pops. Is that what you're telling me? I think that's Correct. What we're coming to. Yeah, I'd say not as good as breakfast in bed. Well, oh, but it's but better than party but, balloons. But better than loose change. Better than loose change. Yeah, I'd say it's oh, better than party balloons. Yeah. Oh, I'd say it's not as good as party balloons. They do play Mumford and Sons a lot. <laughs> Not bad. I guess if you look at it over and over, yeah. But I'd say they're below Breakfast in Bed, above Loose Change in the Street. I, I don't really know what my opinion is, because yeah. I haven't really heard enough of them. I feel like it's one of those things that I would probably enjoy as a sort of novelty if I was over there and listened to it for a while. For but how would, long, though? Yeah, I would probably, if I lived over there, I'd get sick of it quickly and turn it off. I, I think you'd enjoy it for at most an hour, mm. and probably 20 minutes. Okay. I'd want more breakfast in bed in my life than American radio. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. just overall, oh. in the whole wide, That's hopefully wide ranging my life, I'd want that to happen more often than American radio. Then again, probably American radio is like giving a lot of bands their first start and mm. music that probably wouldn't have made it in any other kind of thing mm. is good bits mm. there. So maybe overall, American oh. radio is better than breakfast in bed. I think Mark's um, man crush probably raises it up above breakfast in bed just <laughs> in terms of the average of people's opinions here. Okay. okay. Not as good as po- Cocoa Pops, but better than breakfast Still in bed. Still not as good as Cocoa Pops. No. Mm-hmm. No. All that tells me is Party Balloons is in the wrong place. Well, you might have a chance to change that. Soon. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that was our first American thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope someone has a positive one because yeah. mine isn't. Oh. I mean, that's, that's fairly positive. What, what, what's yours, you? My one is New York. That's oh, yeah. right. Ooh. I'm bringing New York to the table. You're bringing us another city. That's right. The oh, big dear. apple. Oh yes. This could get messy. This could get a bit dark, but let's do it. We're bringing New York, concrete jungle where dreams are made of. That's right. Wow. If you just. Got a list of phrases. <laughs> New York, New York, what a hell of a town. <laughs> yeah, so I've been to New York once on a holiday and 
I really liked it. I think New York's pretty awesome kind of thing. When you think of like an American city, I'm sure most people, their minds do go to New York to a certain extent. The big skyscrapers, just everything being so impressive and so kind of in its own way, both New York and America at the same time, all the kind of the markets, just people doing business. The Broadway, it's got so much stuff in that one place and it's like being with an American history sort of the whole way through from the very sort of start almost you could say. It's a really cool city. It's it's almost like, I know it's maybe a bit over exaggerating, but you could almost say like it's the world capital city in a sense. This overall sort of city stuff, modern city stuff, New York has it. Every other city, well, if they've got it, New York also has it and probably has it a bit better than they do. And you hear about New Yorkers being sort of very kind of mean or kind of being like not the most welcoming of people and that, but you also hear that they've also got quite a, a sense of community. Yeah, after 9-11, they really sort of pulled themselves together and survived a really terrible sort of time. It might have some individuals sort of base there that you might not like as sort of potentially okay. sort of business Did slash political people potentially. But the people in New York don't also like them it seems, so that's <laughs> also a point in their favour I'd say. They're kind of cool city monuments. Yeah, I probably could go on and on about it, but yeah, I think North New York's a really cool place. So that's why I'm bringing it to the American discussion. Hmm. I agree with all of that. Um, I think New York's uh, New York's a brilliant thing. Um, I think a lot of people there are start raving mad. <laughs> um, I think a lot of them would tell you you would have to be start raving mad to live there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure I agree with that. I think it's a beautiful town. Um, I think it's got some great stuff. I think it takes ages to get from one side of it mm -hmm. to the other, um, but I don't really care because it's, it's really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were there in September with nothing particularly planned and we just spent a week wandering around and looking at things and eating food and drinking beer and drinking wine and uh, and meeting people and looking at stuff and it was just brilliant yeah it's good the only downside of new york i'm trying to think what what's negative about new york it's a bit expensive it's very mm. expensive oh, yes. so it's pretty expensive to live there to visit there so it's not it's not that expensive to get there. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive to stay there. I think is a is one thing. Other downsides, it it can be a bit down at heel in places. It's a bit dirty mm -hmm. uh, in some places. Yeah. It's like they're they're so busy they don't they don't care. Mm -hmm. You know we've we've got better things to do than move the rubbish out of the streets. The, <laughs> the rubbish can stay there. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. But. I've never met a New Yorker that was really rude, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure these people actually exist. Mm. Well, no, yeah, that's true. I, I've, yeah. I've never met one that, was, that wasn't nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they're very busy, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. they don't have very much time, and they'll, yeah. they'll speak to you as little as possible, but, you know, that's fine. Yeah, I like that. I would say, though, about the con of it being quite expensive. I mean, if you do look at the cities that are very, like, touristy to a certain extent and busy and big, they're all quite expensive. London, Paris, mm. Berlin, to some extent, quite expensive true, cities as well. So they're, yeah. I don't think New York is different than them in yeah. that sort of capacity. Yeah. So yeah. Also, my favorite American radio presenter is it's is on a station in New York. Uh, New Yorker, so, yeah. you know, yeah. and is a New yeah. Yorker. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Alex, uh, I've never been there. My knowledge of it mostly comes from Home Alone Two, <laughs> <laughs> lost in New York. <laughs> Which I think maybe put me off it early in my life because I it's, it looks a bit scary in some of that film, like the bit where he's just walking through the streets and mm. meeting all these scary people and he gets into a taxi <laughs> and driver scary and everything. Yeah. I think I was I, I I would probably be a bit stressed out there because I'm not really a big city sort of person, I guess. Um, but it certainly looks cool and it's an iconic place yeah. and it's just I mean from what I I know of it, it's yeah. probably a good thing. You bring up a good point that everywhere you, nearly everywhere you go in New York, you're like, oh, that's in that film. Yeah. Oh, that's in that yeah. film. You, oh, you, that's that bit. You, oh. you, you, you know a lot yeah, about you know, it from, it from films and TV shows you, already. Mm. But that's yeah. almost like a point that sort of loads of things have been set in New yeah. York because it's New York in a yeah. sense. Mm. And Ghostbusters was filmed there. Ghostbusters. Yeah, which is, of course, the best film ever. <laughs> Not according to the list. <laughs> yeah, we haven't put it on the list that's yet, true, so we'll see. That's, mm. that's true. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think we talked enough about New York, I guess. Yeah, yeah. but we just need to decide where it goes. And yeah. It's got some this good bridges as well. Controversial it's one, probably. Good bridges, well, good rivers, good buildings, good mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of winning, it's winning me over. Hmm. Yeah. 
Is it's my one. Either? So I would say number two now. Yeah. Uh, as a man who has been to both New York and Berlin, mm-hmm. you would you would put New York above Berlin? Yeah, I would mm-hmm. say so. I think Berlin, as lovely as the city it is, and Berlin does have a lot of stuff going on, but I think New York has more of everything sort of going on kind of thing. Okay. I would say New York is above Berlin. Mm, I agree. I would agree with that. Yeah, okay, but I not as good as water. I can't have an opinion because I haven't been to New York, so <laughs> I'll, I'll go along with that. If James was here, we'd probably have to fight on our oh, hands, yeah. but... He's not, so, so that's we'll fit it in. <laughs> Number two, New York, New York. City. New, New York. York. <laughs> cool. Do you want to go next, Val, or shall I? Uh, I can go next. I'm, I'm wearing mine. <gasps> oh. Are you ready? Yes. So This isn't really going to play on the podcast. <laughs> it's a t-shirt. It's, oh. that, says that says NASA. It says NASA. <laughs> oh. So that's Ooh. my American thing. Oh, that's that pretty cool. good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Is it it's the not t-shirt just about this or planet. is it NASA? It's NASA. <laughs> <It's> NASA. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, so NASA uh, are exploring not just, well, they're exploring the universe. I think that's pretty cool. Mm. They've sent people to the moon. Um, they went, uh, they, they have... Uh, They've done those things. <laughs> wow, you've really, really done a lot of research. Uh, what more do you need to say, really? Yeah, so, they, they're doing not rocket launches well, they, a lot. They're doing some new stuff. They've sent mm-hmm. probes to other planets. Yeah, yeah it's not, not rocket science. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we uh, went to, where did we go? The um, Kennedy Space Centre. So saw some NASA-related things there. I saw... Space shuttle, which is very cool. They make a big fuss about the space shuttle, mm, which yeah. is quite nice because you're like, oh, okay, we'll see the space shuttle. And then by the time you've seen the video and you've seen all the displays and that, and then they're going, okay, are you ready to see the space shuttle? And you're like, by that point, you're in a frenzy. You're like, oh my god, I need to see the space shuttle. Mm. And so when they finally reveal yeah. it, you're like, oh, it's finally there. Oh, thank goodness, I've seen it. <laughs> oh can, yes. If you can get it past, sort of works you up. If you can get past that door opening yeah. and seeing the thing without oh. crying, you're a better man than I am. <laughs> Um. Here it is. Yeah, and no. then Saturn V is there, which is huge, very huge, huge rocket. Even more inspiring than the Coca Cola mm-hmm. experience. All that <laughs> it was, it, it was close. Very close. close. <laughs> They've been taking tips from each other, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm. Yeah, Coca Cola so. one makes you cry in a different way <laughs> <laughs> when you drink Beverly. Uh. Oh. Mm. It's a little reference for people who've been to the Coca Cola <laughs> place. Um. So yeah, NASA are doing uh, are interesting because they are reaching out to other planets. As mm, it were. Totally. Usually use an American phrase. Yeah. Uh, they are exploring to see if we're alone, and I think that's quite interesting stuff. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Definitely agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the most one of the most inspiring sort of chapters in American history. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, not that I have great great knowledge of it, but it's <laughs> kind of, I mean. Maybe there is downsides to it, but to me it's kind of unambiguous that it's a cool thing that we should be doing. NASA seems like, like it's one of the iconic parts of America, as if you think of America as a whole. Mm. NASA's yeah. definitely mm. one of the iconic yeah. things. And it is like, it's a part of like what America brings to the world, I feel is, again, it's what I guess they try and stand for about it being inspiring and reaching forward into the future and that kind of stuff. And NASA as a whole seemed to be like a bunch of very smart people being allowed to sort of work on very smart things and given the money to, well, hopefully the money to do that kind of stuff and progress human development in the right yeah. direction. Uh, and they're very, um, they're fairly open and, and welcoming as well. And they, mm. they work with all of the other countries and uh, there's no... Mm-hmm. Any more? There, there isn't any more a, a kind of rivalry uh, uh, where we're we're better at space than you are. It's there's there's none of that anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's all no. people working together. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. so I mean, we're we're saying NASA because we're talking about America, but we could be talking yeah. about any of the space agencies, really. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, NASA's like I don't know. It was the one of the poster childs anyway. For yeah, it. One, yeah. Of, one of the first two, of course. So. Yeah, uh, mm. I I um, have recently watched the film uh, Hidden Figures, which I won't oh, yeah. go much into, but it does yeah. show, I guess, as much dark as you could go with NASA mm-hmm. in a sense uh, because it was about NASA and sort of the 50s and mm-hmm. preparing for the first sort of like human America's first human sort of space yeah. flight to space uh, and some individuals sort of have opinions about uh, race relations that at the mm-hmm. time was common but still you don't really want to sort of mm-hmm. see somewhere like NASA sort of having that kind of stuff but yeah. it also I guess showed like 
very briefly into the film, like how African American people were employed, a few ladies in particular, that had a integral part in the actual space exploration mm-hmm. and development, and that NASA at least was able to do that. And by the end of the film and in history, like they were given like prestige in a sense in the in the in NASA that they worked in. Though as the point of the film goes, they're hardly known. In, history until now of his film being made uh-huh. but even then it like showcased John Glenn who was the astronaut that eventually did go into space as the first American as being really just lovely genuine nice guys so a lot of people in NASA even back then were lovely so yeah uh. yeah NASA and yay they've also given us lots of inventions yeah yeah like pillows Ooh. those squishy space pillows oh yeah, yeah. Not- it's from not, not all not, pillows. Well, not, not all pillows. There, there were pillows. There were pillows. There were pillows. <laughs> some pillows beforehand. Before the 1950s, yeah. there were pillows. And um, yeah. ballpoint pens, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Freeze dried coffee. Freeze dried. Yeah. Freeze dried anything. Freeze dried yeah. anything. Microwave technology. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's necessary or not. Maybe to to some extent. I think yeah. they did. Anyway, there was there's a long list. Uh, I guess I guess <laughs> yeah. I guess the GPS <laughs> system as well. Oh which yeah. Is well partly them, partly the US military, but I imagine mm-hmm. they put. The satellites into the right place. Mm. Yeah. So that's their mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. So what? What? Where would you say you would put that? So? Well, oh hi. I'd say actually maybe two. Mm. Maybe above New York. So mm. not as good as water, but maybe they're better than water. Mm. Why not? I don't know. I mean, they spend a long time looking for water. They do spend a long time. <laughs> yeah, they, they're, so, they're, that's basically their job they, now: yeah. is searching for Pretty water. Because if they found, if they could find water, then maybe that makes them better than water. Because you don't need water because you've got a means to find it. I wonder if asking NASA <laughs> themselves, like, what do you think water's <laughs> you, better than you? They haven't been that great at finding it though. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, they can find it. Okay. It's, it's just, just, it's just not liquid. That's Jesus. the. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Somewhere, somewhere around there, either either one or two, I think. I would agree with Val actually that NASA is definitely up there. I think probably yeah, it's better than New York. Let's just say. I mean, as much as I <laughs> just love New York as a city, wow. it's pretty cool. But NASA is like such overall like inspiring and like to a certain extent, you feel like they're gonna like help the human race progress to a you, next level. I mean, in a if sense. it doesn't destroy itself. If it doesn't then, destroy itself. They will be among those who probably contribute. It's just forward. Yeah. I'd imagine. And for what they've done so far, it's been pretty good. Pretty good. I would put it above New York. I met someone from NASA, you know. Huh? I also have a NASA t shirt. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we, were, we were driving around America and um, I was looking at a, a scenic view somewhere and a very large pickup truck pulled up and a man got out of it, older gentleman, and he looked at my t shirt and he went, Hey, you work for NASA? <laughs> I said, uh, I don't, I'm afraid, but I have been on the tour. And he went, oh, I do. <laughs> um, wow. So that was that was really cool. I want to restart all this conversation. Like, <laughs> just so we can admit that you worked for NASA. Wow. I mean, I would probably do that as well, to be honest. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, next time someone asks you if you work for NASA, I, think you I, should, yeah. I really yeah. should have said oh, yes. yes. Oh, Dr. Yeah. Mark, yes. But yeah. they, need ask, they need to ask me what I did. <laughs> So are we all on board with putting it above New York? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Put it above Maybe New York. underwater though. Underwater. <laughs> we'll put it below water until they yeah. find liquid water. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. a good yeah. which yeah. point. Yeah. Again, we've got yeah. which point they have conquered water. They have conquered water. Okay. <laughs> Number two. Yeah. Wow, this is some very that's very high scoring. Mm. America's America America doing yeah. well. Yeah. America's doing pretty strong. Yeah. 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 It is. Um, cool. And that would have been a great inspiring one to end on. <laughs> Oh, no. I, I, I bet I know what you're going for. Unfortunately, I have brought the American tipping system. Oh! Uh, so. what, what did you think I was going for? It was either that hmm. or... Britney Spears. Yeah, that's right. Oh. <laughs> of course, yes. One of two famous blondes <laughs> from America. Um... So yes, the American tipping system. I'm not. I'm not much of a fan of it. To be honest, it wasn't as bad when I went there as I expected. I sort of expected it to be just horrible and cringeworthy and just a constant source of stress. But it it was all right. But I just didn't. I just don't like it. I don't like the rules. Um, in case you don't know, in case you're in America and you don't know how to, how other places do it, I'm sure everywhere is slightly different. But here, tips aren't quite as big a deal as over there. Like, you give them, but there's not, like, a formula that you use to work them out. And mm. if, if you don't give a certain amount, then it's just a horribly offensive thing and people will actually confront you about it, which I've heard about. It's just... 
feel like people should probably pay their staff enough to live on without having to rely on some weird like maths that you have to do yourself when you go in there and get all stressed out about it and then risk offending someone. It is awkward. Yeah, I always forget that you've got, well, because you know, when you think, oh, that's, that seems reasonable, that's quite a good value for dinner. I, and they go, oh, yeah, you've got to do the tip thing. So you I, always, I always forget to put it in. I cost. was considering yeah. bringing as, as, as my yeah. as my American mm. thing the fact that you never know how much anything is going mm. to be. Because mm. tipping is a big part of it. It's also the way they, they, they show the prices without the tax included. That's insane. Is, well. is, is, is the, the other thing. And I was yeah, my, my, my problem with America was going to that? be not knowing how, how much everything is. Mm. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the tipping system, I, I, I've, I've kind of become resigned to it. Um, these days, they, they'll write some numbers on the bottom of the receipt saying, yeah. you should tip somewhere between this number and this number. Hmm. I like it when um, they help. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that's nice. And, but, but in different towns, they're different percentages. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. Like in New York, you'll often find that the low number is 20%, uh, which mm. to, to those of us on this side of the Atlantic is just insane. Yeah. This is far too much money. Um, but I, I tend to go for... I tend to go for the middle number, to be honest. Mm. Um, so they, they can they can really get me by, by starting at a high, a high percentage. But I've never had any complaints from anyone having gone for the middle number. And I've actually been smiled at by more waiting staff mm. than, than I've expected. So mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of going okay, I think. But, but I, I, I do agree with Alex that this is a stupid way to be proceeding. And people need mm. to pay people properly. Then there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be so much of a problem. Mm. It is that thing. It's probably one of the things in America that you do get almost like a little culture shock from a little bit of mm. tipping systems. Or yeah, I mean, so I'd, much, like, I'd, to that. I'd heard enough about it before I went over there that I was sort of prepared. But that sort of thing really stresses me. I just not knowing what, what I continue tipping even not, over here does actually. What I continue not to understand about the American tipping system is how much you're supposed to tip in a taxi. Yeah, and also I, I don't even know who you're supposed to tip. Like there's so oh, many, there's that too. Yeah, there's so many jobs that. You could potentially yeah. tip someone doing oh, yeah. that. Tour guides are a, are a, are yeah. a big one, which yeah. which I didn't do for years and years and years and must have upset mm, an awful God. lot of people. Really? But then found myself in several positions where it became completely impossible not to tip someone because oh. we were like the only people on the tour or whatever, oh, yeah. you know. And mm. uh, or they would they would what go to great lengths. To they would go to great lengths to explain uh, how much they 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 would expect to be to be tipped. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a great racket going on in the U.S. at the moment, seemingly with tours that are advertised as being free. Um, oh, yeah. By which they mean tip the guide at the end, mm-hmm. which you know is fair enough. Mm-hmm. But Seems to see how how the heck much? Over here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but it's fine when something has a price and you tip a percentage of that, or you, or, mm. or the thing is quite cheap and you know that yeah, if it would weird. if it would ordinarily have cost you ten or whatever, then you might tip them ten. But if you've really no idea, oh yes, yeah, so yeah, it's a whole mess of stuff. Yeah. Well, they, you always do get very good service. In there. Yeah, they're yeah. famous for their service. Everyone tries very hard. Mm, they work for their tips. But, yeah. Or they should anyway. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, it that's the thing. A cruel way of doing it. Mm. Well, you hear the fact that like they actually survive on their tips and that kind yeah. of stuff. You sort of feel like that should be how it should, the system no. should really work. The like, job should pay enough for you to be able to survive yeah. on what you're doing, and the tip should be for people to do an extra, extra good service. Yeah. 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 I, want, I want to make it clear if we put this law on the list, which I would lean towards doing, then I, I'm not saying you shouldn't tip people because. Yeah. You should, but it just shouldn't work like that. It's the system. Yeah. Yeah, it's the system yeah. that I object it's, to. It's not even that we've been grudge doing it. It's just that it's... <laughs> just include it in the price. It's too hard to work out. Yeah, the service yeah. charge. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so I would I would put it down in the awkward situations. <laughs> um, awkward. Sort of section yeah. of the list. <laughs> which is just a little cluster down here with like... Below the air related I products. Would, mm. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I might I, even put it below the bus stop situation. Yeah, mm. I think so. Yeah, it's hard because it's so unknown. Yeah. And, it, and it probably yeah. it probably is bad for people's mental health. Like, if you work in a service profession, mm. it probably stresses you out, not knowing if you're going to make enough yeah, like, true. Mm-hmm, to get by or not. So I would I would put it down. Number 23, I think. Mm. But what, what do you guys think? Have any of you ever worked in a job where you've got a tip, actually? No. No. I have. Yeah. When I used to do the night club photography, I got a tip once, oh. and it was a twenty pound note. So nice. that didn't make my day. So, <laughs> uh, but that's what happens when you work in a place where it's very affluent clientele that are quite drunk. So <laughs> you can have those situations occur to you. But for the majority of the American tipping system, yeah, I'd probably put it. But if you got one tip once, that's not a very high average tip. I don't. I guess, I guess but my 
job wasn't actually a tipping based job, oh, so okay. I was doing yeah. such a good job that right. Right. it was okay. almost like a bonus I was given. Well, maybe your client was an American. Maybe. In which case, then that's a good thing, yeah. because they're, they're, they're coming to the rest of the world mm. and, and tipping people who are not expecting to be tipped. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. So that's one positive, I guess, too. True. Can we drag them so up you, a couple of places think, for that? Do you think you've got, you got more from that tip than you found wandering the streets in your life? <laughs> Probably, actually, to be honest. <laughs> but I, still, I, I still feel like the system, the main issue with it being like, as a support to being paid crummy wages is not great. So yeah. I think that in itself bumps it right down to just above peers working. Yeah, that's my feelings on it. It's a lot worse than the bus situation, I think. Yeah, the bus situation is annoying, but it is what it is. We've explained numerous things to do to sort of alleviate that situation. Yeah, we can really ways, do it with Yeah, tipping, so. tipping is a systematic thing that needs to change to rise up and yeah. smash capitalism <laughs> to fix that one. I'm going to put it here. Just above peers. Mm. Yeah. Almost the very bottom. Almost. Number 23. Okay, so yeah. now that's all our things for today, I believe. Woo, that was quite a long one. Mm. Um, and we now have a new order, but before we say it all out loud, we just have time for nudges and grudges. Oh. In which each of us can choose to move something up oh. one or down one. Does anyone want to? I would argue, mm -hmm. cocoa pops are better than porridge. Well, that's a that's that's, a, that's, that's, that's impossible <laughs> you'll need to, to fix. come to a few more episodes, Val, to actually get if that we, all the way up. If we yeah, all did that, if we yeah. all bumped up co uh, cocoa pops, right, oh, no, what, 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 no, we couldn't. It was a big jump. It's too big mm -hmm. for that. Too big. But if you pitch it to us right, Val, you might be able to get us to bump cocoa pops up a bit. I wonder if cocoa pops can can bump up a bit because they are pretty good. Do you want to bump yeah. up? Yeah, they're, they're definitely better than party balloons. Yeah, well, okay. I, I think, you know, Cocoa Pops are quite a joy in the morning sometimes. So, I oh. like Cocoa Pops yeah. a lot as well. These, these guys. And they make a little sound. We, I, we didn't make you do anything, yeah. Alex. I would like to promote Cocoa Pops or demote party balloons, whichever way of looking at it mm. you, would, you would like. Mm. Um, so I would like to swap those two. Okay, and Val, do you want to bump up Cocoa Pops anymore after that? So that's one bump for Cocoa Pops. Ooh, hard. Uh, so Cocoa Pops versus Coca-Cola. Mmm, mm, toughy. That's tough. I probably drink Coca-Cola more than I eat Cocoa Pops. So I'd say, mm. Although porridge is up there, maybe it's an argument. You could bump down, down. Maybe porridge. Porridge should come down. Yeah, but I would say Cocoa Pops are about right. Okay, are. anything you want to change you in? Mm, it's tough. There's a lot of stuff now on the list to sort of go through. Yeah. It? It's not uh, really. No, I think they're fine where they all are just now. Okay, I'm going to bump up Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Because it's been annoying me. I've been looking at this list all Ooh. week. And it's just, I'm just like, porridge is above Harry Potter. That's not right. So I'm going to fix that now. That's a good call. Thank you. Mm. Porridge just seems like it should be in the middle. Porridge seems like the base level. Everything <laughs> else is either above or below that. There we go. Um, <laughs> nice. So Val, you still have a bump if you want to, or are you in? I'll see what Val does first. Okay. <laughs> I have to sort things so out. I've got a, what have I got? A bump down? You, or a bump up? You can, you can do either. One or the other. I mean, they're the same thing at this point, but... I think compasses could go above 1984. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Just because mm -hmm. compasses have been uh, pretty useful and they're so instrumental in explorers navigating the world and getting everywhere they need to get okay. to. But 1984, but 1984 a... is, is instrumental in guiding how to how to deal with the world at the moment. It's a massive warning. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure we're supposed to argue at this point. But... But... You just wouldn't have 1984 without compasses. Probably after the best. <laughs> Don't want 1984 to happen. <laughs> Do you want to? You can bump it up. Yes, you're cool. They also look really nice. Compasses. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do look lovely. Yeah, and like you know, they're quite. It's quite magical. Um, it's a magical bit of kit. Okay. That's, that's tied into the world. So I think uh, yeah, compasses up. up. Okay. Go, go. Up. Compasses go up. Yeah. Up 1984. Oh my Goes god. Down. Gavin is not going to be happy about this because he was Bing. already complaining to me that compasses are too high up on the list. Oh. But anyway. <laughs> Fool. Fool. There, there's our nudges and our grudges. I feel um, like I should do one now because they're awesome. Yeah, no, no, no. Do, if you want. Everything's so standard. I just want to sort of save it to a particular point where I feel 
powerful about it, so okay. I'll leave it. So, that just leaves us to run through the order of things from top to bottom. The list is getting a bit longer now. We've got 24 things on it. Uh, we'll go around and who wants to begin our... I'll go ahead. Okay. Number one is water. Uh, number two is NASA. Number three is New York. Number four is the city of Berlin. Number five is compasses. And then it's 1984. Number seven is Switzerland. Then pangolins. Having good teeth. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And number 11 is Porridge. Followed by the Loch Ness Monster. And then Coca-Cola. And then coming in at number 14 is Coco Pops. Then it's Party Balloons. Then American Radio Stations. Then Breakfast in Bed. Then Loose Change in the Street. And number 19 is When a Dog Follows You and It Isn't Your Dog. Saying Goodbye on the Phone is next. Followed by 21, Get a Haircut. And then when you're at a bus stop and you don't know whether the person in front of you is getting on the bus or not. Uh, 23 is the American tipping system. And still at the bottom of the list, Piers Morgan. Yay! Yay! <laughs> That's the order of things for today. It's fun. I feel like we've made good progress and, and we've shaken up the top of the list, which is something I was worried about. I was worried it was going to stay the way it was forever. Mm. So, good work, nice. everyone. Yay! Good job. Good job. And... Uh, what else is there to say? I can't think of anything. I can't even think of a witty way to end it, so I'm just going to end bottom, it before. The bottom needs a shake up. <laughs> um, you still got to work on the bottom end. Ah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe some, maybe someday. Some we'll it. Diff- it. Difficult to find many things worse than Piers Morgan at the minute. There must be some badder things. There must be. Maybe we'll find them next episode, next time we record. Everything for everything. everything. We did it with Fred and Ending. Bye, everyone. <laughs>